The key idea for this apartment was to combine the sleeping areas, part of the kitchen and the storage areas into one central unit. And the unit itself is inspired by the age-old Japanese tansu chests. This apartment building is located in Sydney, in a small suburb called Elizabeth Bay, uh, which is in very close proximity to the Sydney CBD. This building was built in 1970. All four sides of the apartment block are open, and each unit benefit from having a balcony and gain cross ventilation from its proximity to the harbour. Uh, and there's a, a beautiful park right on the doorstep of the building. The original condition of the apartment was, was quite tired. There was a makeshift kitchen in the studio space and a bedroom had been inserted where the kitchen once was. The common theory here would be that we shift all of the utility to the perimeter and we're left with a fluid space in the middle and that gives us a sense of space. So what we decided to do was remove the party wall that divided the kitchen from the studio space and create an open plan. Although it seems a somewhat ironic solution, we conceived of a double-sided storage unit and we were inspired for the storage unit by the age-old Japanese tansu chests. And this storage unit would, in a sense, dictate how the apartment could be used and manipulated for everyday use. The living space is a multifunction space. It doubles as the bedroom at night and it's a space to, to sit down, relax, benefit from the view, and be separate to the utility spaces. The built-in bench seat has a considerable amount of storage, but we wanted to give this element a sense of lightness. On three sides, it has a reflective surface, and there is a continuation, therefore, of the floor running through, and it appears as though it is a floating element rather than a bulky element. There's a small surface to one side of the bench seat, which allows the occupant to come in and place items that they may have at hand directly on the bench. The pod is deliberately separate from the structure. We wanted it to feel more like a piece of furniture and for that reason it doesn't extend all the way to the ceiling. There's a distorted mirror to provide reflection immediately upon entry and what that does is it reduces the visual bulk of the pod and reflects the other part of the living room and immediately gives you a greater impression of space than you would have if it was a solid element. The elevation of the storage unit that faces the living space houses a queen folding bed and an integrated storage niche behind the bed, television and AV cupboard. And there is also a folding bedside for use. The storage pod contains integrated lighting there is an integrated light behind the bed. There is illumination on top of the pod that provides a soft, bounced light. And there is integrated light in the art niche. At the ends of the pod, there are matching folded integrated tables. What this enables us to do is exploit the space that is otherwise left void simply for circulation. We've imagined one as a dining surface and one as a work surface. The dining surface is linked to the kitchen and the work surface is by the window. We have split the kitchen into two sides. One is the primary kitchen for cooking and for washing. And on the other side, the kitchen has bled into the storage pod where we have the pantry, the bulk of the storage and the integrated refrigerator. The client was very particular about how he wanted the kitchen arranged. For instance, he's put the oven very, very low because he doesn't prioritise cooking with the oven. Instead, he prioritises cooking on the benchtop surface. And he prioritises having all of the things that he needs while he's cooking at hand and higher to the benchtop. At the far end of the pod, uh, we exploit the hallway and it's imagined almost like a, a walk-in robe the rope is positioned directly opposite the bathroom, so we've, we've linked those two pieces of utility. 
The bathroom is accessed via a sliding door so that we don't inhibit the space upon accessing the bathroom. The client had a preference for a black geometric tile in the bathroom, but we've paired that with areas of blank white wall so that the black wasn't over dominant in the space. The three quarter height blade wall doesn't make the shower feel hemmed in because it's quite a small shower. The joinery unit is shaped or angled to allow greater circulation within the space. Because the cabinet is cut on an angle, we've decided to have the mirror on the back of the cabinet so that when you open the cabinet, all of your stuff is accessible and the mirror faces the user. There's a, a full height and full width mirror at one end of the shower. This reflects the length of the bathroom across its longest axis and really gives us a, a really nice sense of space. One of the key advantages of the central pod is that the walls are blank space and this allows the client to put their touches on the place, be it art or decoration, etc. We employ an experimental approach that attempts to exceed the expectations of our clients and create dynamism in small spaces and improve, ultimately, the livability of small spaces. Thanks for watching. To receive updates on our latest episodes, please subscribe and click the notification bell. And if you're an architect or designer with a project we could feature, please share it with us at nevertoosmall.com/submissions.